Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today I'm going to be doing a solo playthrough against the Chrono Bot for Anachrony, or Anachrony, or however you say it. <laughs> I say it Anachrony, I've heard other people say it Anachrony, so I'm going to call it Anachrony. Uh, just like normal, if you'd like to jump right into the playthrough, check out the video below this in the playlist, and that'll go right into the playthrough. Otherwise, hang out here and we'll go through setup. Couple things to note. There are two playthroughs. Well, one night is already out, Ant Lab Games. He does a two-player competitive with his wife. Wow, it is awesome. It's long, but it's awesome. Highly recommend it if you want to see how the competitive game plays, because with the competitive game, you can use more of the modules, and he does that. I can't. With the Chronobot, you only can use the base game. Also, uh, board games with Niramas. So he's uh, one that I recently just found through Tube Tables, actually, and he has mentioned that he'll be putting up an Anachrony solo playthrough. So I'll put links to their, uh, their YouTube channel so you guys can see other playthroughs, too, if you'd like, because... This game, there's so much variability that you could watch two and they'd be totally different games. So, yeah. Anyways, all right, let's get to setting up. First thing to do when setting up the game for a solo game is you'll want to grab the flag of the Chronobot. He gets to be first player and he'll be placed here. The only way you can grab first player is if ever I, you or me, if I grab this spot and pay two water to go here, I can then become first player. Kind of honest, that probably isn't going to happen often, and he'll probably steal it right back from me because it's very often that he'll go to that spot. But, hey, it might happen. <laughs> when you're first player, obviously you get to go first, so that's an advantage. You also want to set up this World Council board, and you'll place this just right on the board. You can see there's even a picture of it right here. What will happen is there's a meteor that hits the Earth after round four, and you're going to flip this, okay? And then you can, if you complete the um, end game requirements for your specific um, sector that you're playing, you then can go here and evacuate and get victory points for that. The Chronobot won't evacuate, but um, in a competitive game, other people can evacuate. That's why you got numbers here. You'll want to place it this way first. Next on the board, you'll want to set up your research dice. So whenever you come to these two spots, you can do some researches to do uh, breakthroughs. And those help you build super projects as well as just give you basic victory points. So you'll set these two dice on the board. Finally, for board setup, you're going to come over here to the mine and you're going to place one uranium, one gold, and one titanium over in these spots. We will fill this at the beginning of each round based on a random card draw, but these will always be there at the beginning of each round. There's a lot going on over here. So this is on the left side of the board. I'm using these little trays. They really help to keep things organized. Um, I've got four different types of workers, geniuses, assistants, scientists, and engineers. We also have all of our power cores over here. We're going to use those to power up our, our mechs and uh, use them to go to use and activate city council action areas. We also have our paradox here. So when we do time travel, we might create paradoxes. And so these are paradox tokens. We have all of our research tiles. So there's three different shapes and six, or one, two, three, four, five different types. So uh, three shapes and five different types. Each one will gain you one victory point. But if ever you get a set of three um, and not of the same, you don't have to worry about the symbols, but three of the different shapes that'll uh, net you two additional victory points. Here are the two cards that we'll draw at the beginning of each round that will tell us which type of workers will be um, available on the board and which mining resources are available. So let's do that right now. This card is going to tell us the type of workers that are going to be available to us. We'll have a scientist, no engineers, one assistant, and two geniuses. Nice. And then here what we have is um, we'll have two gold, two uranium, and one titanium that'll be available to us. So let's put those on the board. So we've placed our available workers right here that we can purchase, the scientists, the assistants, and the geniuses. Now I'm showing you the three section, the, the section of the city council actions. You've got research actions, the recruitment actions, and the building actions. Each one, only certain workers can go there. I'm not gonna get into that in detail. You'll see it during the playthrough. But um, what's important to note here is that each round you'll change this set of workers that are available to you based on those cards that we draw. And those are the only workers available to recruit. And you only have two spaces 
to do that recruitment, and there's two players. <laughs> so there can be some fighting going on over here. Here we have placed the goods that we can get while we're mining, the gold, uh, uranium, and the titanium. Now what we can do is when we drop a mech here, so let's say we put one here for an example, we, we get to grab this uranium and then one of any of these resources. Or if we go here, we get one gold and one of any of these resources. So there's three spots that we can um, go to, to, to do a mining action. Here we have the four different types of buildings that we can build during the game. We've got power plants over here that let us go back in time. We have factories here that just give us goods. We have, uh, I think they're called life support, and those usually give us water. And then we have labs here, and they give you all sorts of things. Like this one would give you an additional mech, you know? So lots of different cool things. And each round, you can buy from either stack here. And at the beginning of each round, we'll take the top one and move it over so that there's more available uh, buildings for you to, to be able to purchase. Sometimes when you go uh, time traveling, you will create anomalies. So this is anomalies, they're all the same, um, so you don't have to shuffle these up, but they are minus three victory points, and you may have to put those on your board. I very well could have to. There's also the paradox die, which you'll see how that's used during the gameplay. Also, you just set up these three stacks. These are used after impact. You'll flip um, them over and place them on the actions and they'll give you additional actions that you can take but then they close them off and that's one of the ways the game will end is when there's no more capital actions available to use victory point pile hopefully most of that's coming to me not to the chronobot <laughs> now they have a spot on the board that you can place these but i find it so much more convenient to have it right by my player boards and uh, i'll just grab the the items from here so this is our water the darker colored ones are worth two water the lighter colored ones are worth one and then these are all the goods that were available that that will fill the mine with each round the titanium gold uranium and neutronium here we have the timeline tiles okay this is telling us how many rounds we have so we have a total of seven rounds that we can play but after this impact it's a potential that we can end in round five, six, or seven. We don't know, but we're guaranteed these four rounds. Uh, if you play competitively, you can use, there's more than just these seven, There's because there's a bunch of these um, random ones that have different effects that you can play with. I can't remember which module that's for, um, but you can't use that with the, uh, with the Chronobot. You can only use the base game with the Chronobot, at least that's my understanding. Um, so what you'll do is you'll then place your focus way down here. Now I have this, it's a power core, but I'm just using that to remind myself where we are because when we time travel, we might move our focus to a different timeline tile. And then at the end of the round, we have to go back to the present. I don't want to forget which round we're in. So this is just our round tracker. Um, we also have our super projects up here. There's 30 of those. So you pick a random seven of them, you flip, the first two so this one and this one and then each round so when we move our focus to here we'll reveal this one and so on and so forth we can only ever build one of these super projects when we're in that current um, era so we might have to move our focus to get into the appropriate area if we want to buy or build a super project from a previous round well this one looks cool I've never done the neutronium research center <laughs> we also have the continuum stabilizer which is really cool and then who knows what these will be we'll, we'll see what they what they are as we go and if I purchase any of these I'll, I'll walk through them. I'm not gonna tell you what each individual tile does because if I don't buy them that's just too much information you can learn them as you play uh, <laughs> there's a awesome appendix in the rule book I have to say this rule book is fantastic so the rule book really uh, uh, you can you can find every single one of these tiles, every single one of the buildings, and find out exactly what they do in the appendix. So great rule book. I really really appreciate that. Here we have the Chronobot board. So this game comes with uh, Chronobot having its own board, which is awesome. Okay, so there's a lot of things going on here, and most of it I'm going to explain during the playthrough. What you need to know when you set it up is there's these numbers here on this tracker and you just need to make sure you place all of the appropriate numbers on the appropriate spots because what will happen is each round will roll this die and then whichever number we roll we'll do the action above or below it whichever one's connected to it and then move that number across the board that means you're never going to know what the chronobot's going to do but if i have you know two of these on top of each other in this spot which is a mining spot 
I will know that, well, you know, I have a, what? What is that? A two, six, so a one-third chance that he's going to go and mine. And so it's uh, it's really cool <laughs> to, to be able to see kind of where, you know, oh, my gosh, he might do this. But you never know because even though those two are there, he'll roll a six and he'll grab two water instead. So it's it's awesome. He also has these trackers so he can track um, if he um, – is able to supply his workers he can move up and get additional victory points every time he time travels he'll move up this he also can get paradoxes and even get um, anomalies which will be placed here if you don't have the expansion for the game you'll put the little um, uh, mechs uh, they're hexagon items right here, but I've got these really cool looking mechs so I'll just I place them to the right side. There's six of them just like there's six for us. These are the warp tiles that he uses. So he doesn't gain anything when he does the warp tile action, but that's used to, to say, well, he's requesting something and he may have to get Paradox because of it. Here he'll track all of his goods. If he gets um, one of each type, he'll give them up and get five victory points. He'll track his workers because he doesn't really use workers, but he'll collect workers. And if he gets one of each type, he'll remove them to get five victory points. He'll place all of the buildings that he builds, and that's one of the big things he does, is he builds tons of buildings and gets tons of victory points because of that. <laughs> and if he does any super projects, they'll go here. And so he can have up to three of each type of building, just like we can on our board. Here's the thing though, my board, you'll see I will not get three of each. He will very likely get three of each, and that's tons of victory points. This is a hard chronobot, which, is, which I really like. There are four sects that you can choose from. There's a Path of Harmony, which is what I'm going to be playing, is the Path of Harmony. Path of Dominance, Path of Progress, and Path of Salvation. And each one, you have to think of them kind of as a, um, I don't know, like almost like a race, even though they're all technically humans, but they're just a way of thinking about what life should be like. So I'm, you know, I'm generally a harmonious individual. <laughs> Really? Is that how you'd say it? I don't know. So I decided to do Path of Harmony. I have done um, four playthroughs of this on my own, one of each of the paths, and I liked the Harmony Path the most, so that's why I chose this one. You have an A and B side of the board. The A is standard for everyone, so it's the same. If you want to have more of um, each player having their own abilities and differences, you can play with the B side. I'm playing with the B side because I think it's cooler to do it that way. Um, but you definitely don't have to. I would suggest playing on the A side first so that everyone is kind of on the same page. But it's fun to, to have differences um, for your specific board versus other people. Now, it, it has different requirements for building, maybe different uh, things you need to do to power up your, uh, your uh, mechs, all of that. It's, it's pretty cool. On your board, the only thing you really have to set up is your tracker for your time travel and your tracker for... Um, uh, supplying your workers because what happens is, is a lot of times your workers will come in they'll be asleep and you'll have to motivate them and you can motivate them by giving them water and then you'll move up this track and if you decide to um, force them and you place one of your tokens here and you force them you can actually go back into negative victory points as well or if you were up here you'd go down and, and so forth so um, supplying your workers is one of the important things that you have to do on your board and you know for um, Path of Harmony they can get up to eight victory points doing that. Each path has two leaders that you can choose from. I have the Patriarch Hualani and the Matriarch Z Zayada. They each give you a special ability. I'm gonna go with um, Patriarch Hulani because what he does is he lets you one time around, you can place your um, token here, and that's a free action, and you can place a worker on one of your buildings for free, and you don't have to then give the Chronobot another turn. So I, I really like that. You also have your player board. Now, this board is awesome. It's got an A side and a B side. So once again, you've got more play ways to, to vary the game and change your strategy. I'm going to play on the A side of this board. And so what you see on this board is it gives you a couple different um, items that you need to look at. The first thing to look at is all the goods that they give you. So to start off with, I'll start with six water. Here's my six water. Plus, I get one because I am not the first player. So I'll get seven water to start with. I get three titanium and one uranium. I also start with three power cores, which is really useful. 
I also start with one genius that's going to be asleep, and then two scientists and two engineers that are awake. And I'll put those on my player board, and I'll show you where those go. But in the meantime, after getting all of that, I will place my leader here. And then going forward, that's my little player mat. And I'll store all my goods below that. One of the main ways you're going to score a lot of victory points, and actually the Chronobot will not do this, so this is a way you can get some victory points when the Chronobot isn't, because otherwise, as you're going to see in the playthrough, he's going to be getting victory points over and over and over and over again, and we're just going to be, you know, feeding our workers or supplying them and just getting them going. <laughs> but anyways, um, <clears throat> one of the ways that you do this is you uh, successfully evacuate. Now, in order to evacuate, each care, or each um, division and each board will have a different requirement. For mine, I have to have three life support systems. When I do that, I automatically get two victory points. But then I will get, for each gold and each um, genius that I have, I'll get three additional victory points. So I'm going to be trying to collect gold and get geniuses. Because if I have a ton of that at the end of the game, oh yeah, I can just rack up the victory points. Something I didn't talk about is you need to get all of your warp tiles together. These are all ways that you can request things from the future so that you can get them in the current round. And then you have a way to also pay them back in future rounds to gain victory points. So you'll have nine of these. And there'll be the workers that you can get, uh, the different supplies, and even a mech if you need it. So we'll get to place our active workers here. You see this is an eye, that means they're awake and they're motivated. And our sleepy genius over here. Geniuses are great because they can be any type of worker. And they can get the benefit of any type of worker. The only thing you can't do with a genius is if you have to pay a cost of a worker, you can't, if it says an, um, it needs an engineer, you can't give up a genius as an engineer. But you can use a genius in a spot that an engineer gets a bonus and you get the bonus. Stuff like that. Don't forget, you'll want to get your mechs as well. And man, do these look awesome. These are the one of, some of the best miniatures for a game that's not even a miniature board game. I just, I can't believe it. It is so cool how they look. Coming down from them on top isn't as cool as maybe seeing them this way, but jeez, oh, even still, awesome. And that, my friends, is the setup to play Anachrony solo against the Chronobot. I've only won this one time. Actually, no, I haven't. I haven't won it one time. I was I, I was close. I have been able to beat the, the easy mode since the beginning, but I have I was within five points the last time I played. So hopefully this time will be the first, but don't be surprised, surprised if I lose. <laughs> but let's get to the playthrough. Thank you so much for watching, and I appreciate you guys being part of the channel. Thank you.